Hey YouTube, my name is Marissa and welcome to Ram Fam Reptiles Northwest's first ever video about not reptiles. <sighs> it's actually about Australian walking sticks, which you could probably tell from the title. So I chose Australian walking sticks to be my first ever video because I have all the other animals that everyone else does videos on, which I love. The videos that everyone else does about those animals like crested geckos ball pythons leopard geckos i have a bunch of animals <laughs> when i got uh my first australian walking stick i noticed that there was not a lot of information out there about them and i think there should be they're really simple pets to keep and take care of but there wasn't a lot of emphasis put on how awesome they are. <laughs> and of course this is probably just only my opinion, but I think they're super cool. So I wanted to put a video out here to show the world how cool they are in hopes that more people will nerd out like me over how cool they are. I totally nerd out over these little bugs. I super nerd out over Australian walking sticks way more than I ever thought that I would in my entire life. Also, it's a video to uh, help the people who don't have Australian walking sticks, who do have Australian walking sticks, who might get Australian walking sticks, learn more about their care and their background. So, here we go. All right, so first things first, what is an Australian walking stick? Wikipedia tells us that it's a large stick bug that is endemic to Australia. Okay, so when you think about Australia, some of these people, places, and things might come to mind. Well, you can now add Australian walking sticks to that list. The second thing you should know about Australian walking sticks is they are only vegetarians. Well, they're only leaf eaters. And then the next thing is they go by different names. You have Australian walking stick, there's giant prickly stick bug, spiny leaf insect, and their scientific name is on the screen, not even gonna try and pronounce it cause I just don't even wanna try that one. <laughs> and just for future reference in this video, I'm only gonna be referring to female Australian walking sticks because I think they are way cooler and prettier and they're the only ones that I have. But I will mention the differences between females and males just for informational purposes. So this is a female Australian walking stick and she's not fully grown. She hatched out probably between June and July. And the differences between her and a male Australian walking stick is they only grow to be about four to five inches long. They have wings and are capable of flight. They also have smaller spines on their bodies in comparison to the female Australian walking sticks. The basics about female Australian walking sticks are they have a thicker looking body. They do have wings technically, but they're not capable of flight. They're just these little nubby things on their backs. They grow to be about four to six inches long. They have larger spines and their limbs, as you could see, look more like leaves. The average lifespan of an Australian walking stick is between 12 to 18 months. And I am going to be able to officially let you know how long they live for me in captivity once these ones die. Um, so as far as their behavior goes, Australian walking sticks are so docile and shy. They can be handled, but especially once they get bigger, their spines get bigger and it can be a little bit shocking once you hold them because they do feel like little pins. They don't, you know, poke into your skin, but it does feel like you're holding a bug that's made of pins. When the nymphs are hatched, they are so much faster than an adult Australian walking stick. As they grow, they will molt, and after they molt several times, they will slow down quite a bit. One way they protect themselves in the wild is doing kind of what you're seeing right now. Uh, they sway like leaves. When they sense movement, they sway like dead leaves on a branch. Another thing that they do when they are faced with a predator is like what you're seeing now, kind of. Uh, they curl their, their tail up to look like scorpions to imitate 
the threat posture of a scorpion. And sometimes we'll throw their little arms up <laughs> to look like scorpions. <laughs> and I just think it's so cute. It's just, it's too much for me. Anyways, on to what they eat. So what I choose to feed my Australian walking sticks is something that grows like crazy in my own backyard and it's blackberry leaves. I have also fed my Australian walking sticks raspberry leaves and they do well on that. But I've also read that they can eat eucalyptus leaves, oak, and rose leaves. I've never tried that so if you have, um, maybe let me know and that might be something else that I try for my Australian walking sticks. Whatever you choose to feed your Australian walking sticks, always remember to rinse before you put them in their enclosure because I get mine from my backyard, so spiders and other bugs can be crawling on them. I've actually cut off leaves that have egg sacs on them and that would just be unfortunate. I don't want to have spiders growing in with my, in my house at all, actually, but. And then don't just toss your Australian walking sticks food in there. What you're gonna wanna do is take a jar or a cup that is sturdy enough and fill it with water and then you put your blackberry leaves or what have you into the cup and the most important thing to remember is to make sure there's a barrier between the water and your Australian walking stick because they can and probably will drown especially if they're younger. So I use paper towel. It's the easiest thing to use. Uh, I tried putting rocks in at first and just using rocks it just doesn't leave enough space for enough water to keep the leaves and the stems uh, alive and well uh, for as long as they possibly can. I like to change my Australian walking sticks blackberry leaves out at least twice a week so that they can always have something fresh and delicious to eat. As long as you have fresh leaves that have been put in water in their enclosure they shouldn't need a water bowl or anything like that. Uh, Australian walking sticks don't need that. What I do though is mist them at least twice a day so that gives them extra water but they mostly just get their water from the food that they eat. But on the topic of misting, as far as temperatures and humidity goes, I'll talk about humidity first. Uh, Australian walking sticks from the very beginning need a decent amount of humidity. If you don't give them the proper humidity they need to molt they can die, especially when they're young hatchlings. The hatchlings and nymphs molt a lot more frequently than adult Australian walking sticks, and that's because that's their way of growing. And what they need in order to molt is humidity. So I don't have high humidity in their enclosure all the time. When I have younger Australian walking sticks, I will mist at least three times a day just so they can have that little boost, but they do need a drying out period throughout the day in between mistings. But when it comes to temperatures, I keep mine in room temperatures. My house stays between 72 to 76 degrees during the day, and it never drops below 65 degrees at night. So no super cold temperatures and no super hot temperatures. They don't need anything more than that. When you're looking for housing for your Australian walking stick, the rule of thumb to always keep in mind is to make sure their enclosure is three times their length in height. So what I house mine in is a Reptibreeze screen enclosure and they get plenty of airflow so it doesn't get too humid and there's plenty of height. I don't think you can have an enclosure that's too big for an Australian walking stick as long as they have access to plenty of food. As long as food fills up at least half of their enclosure then they should be fine. Now you can also use something like a fish tank that will definitely help humidity stay up so you won't have to mist as often, but I always suggest the Reptibreeze enclosures. Any kind of screen enclosure is gonna be best. So forgive the wobble, but these are my two enclosures that I keep all of my Australian walking sticks in. I have about 23 so far. And as you saw there, I use paper towel as substrate, and that is what I would suggest using for an Australian walking sticks enclosure. It's so easy and simple to clean. Every time you go in and change out their food, take out the paper towels, and just lay a new sheet down. And it's as simple as that. Totally cheap, too. So my two favorite things about the Australian walking sticks 
is the first one and I'll try and find pictures to put up here um, but they change colors based on their environment and there are only three that I've read about I don't think you know you can put them in a purple enclosure and they turn purple but based on the kind of foliage they're fed and the kind of foliage they're surrounded by they can change their color not like a chameleon I think they grow up into that color so they can't just like change color based on how they feel or where they are but the three main ones that I've read about are brown and green and then a white kind of looking one like lichen on a tree which I was totally fascinated by and if I ever have any more hatchlings I'm going to go for that because I think that looks super cool the reason they do this is to blend into their environment better it's another way that they keep themselves safe and not eaten the second and I think most awesome trait about female Australian walking sticks is their ability to produce via parthenogenesis. Basically what that means is if they're in the wild and a male fertilizes their eggs, then the eggs that they lay will produce males and females. But in captivity or without the presence of a male, a female Australian walking stick will still constantly lay eggs and those eggs will produce all females. But that's the reason why I have so many Australian walking sticks. The thing about eggs that are hatched via parthenogenesis is that they take a considerable amount of time longer to hatch out than eggs that have been fertilized by a male. So I think that's it. Basically everything that I can think of or remember about Australian walking sticks that I think is super cool and about their care and how they make great pets. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you learn to love Australian walking sticks. Um, maybe that you're inspired to have one as a pet. And if you already have Australian walking sticks, I hope that maybe you learned something new. And if not, and if you think I need to learn something new, please comment in the comments below. Um, let me know what you think and feel free to like this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much again for watching and have a great day.